Greetings, Pilgrims, and welcome to another episode of the Polygon Pilgrimage, and we are back with our menus here in our Battle Royale series, and today we are beginning to actually implement some menus. So, I know that there's a lot of tutorials out there for menus, and I know that a lot of them are kind of beginner-focused, so as the Pilgrimage is growing and we're getting more and more members, which welcome to you all, I wanted to make sure that we don't discount some of the basic stuff and so yes, we're going to go through and do some menu stuff. To my advanced users, I apologize. Stick with me just for a little bit here while we help everybody out, but you might learn a trick or two. So today what we are going to do is, as you can see, we are starting to mimic the Fortnite menu style here. So we got our season six because it is season six of the pilgrimage. Very nice. We got a little cat logo because who doesn't love cats? Level three, three is my favorite number. And then down here, you may have noticed we have this fancy little shine going on. We're going to talk about how to make that. And I made you a whole bunch of custom images. I'm going to show them to you all, and I'm going to show you how I broke down the menu and started to build up these elements and how to put these together in a canvas in our scene. So enough jabbering. Let's get to it. So as you can see, we have our scene here from last time. If I go to our scene, and let's focus on the world. I did do a little bit of organization here. So we have character bases and our characters. So let's focus on character number one and zoom in on him. Here he is. So this is just like we saw it last time. The only difference is I rearrange things just a little bit. I put these guys a little closer together. I put this guy up on a little pedestal here because I'm lining up with a reference image. So let's take a look at that. If we go to the game view, all right, game view, let's take our world and just hide it. Now, if I open up my canvas here, which we'll talk about all of this, don't you worry. For right now, let's just sort of put these things all together here. Now, if I go to my reference image and unhide that, You'll see this is a screenshot that I'm building right on top of. And yes, it's my user ID, just like it is in the Discord. If you guys want to at me and let's, you know, play some time, no big deal. Uh, so we are building on top of this menu. And as you can see, these little plus icons, this is where you would add a team member. So our new layout lines up perfectly with these. So as an example, let's unhide the world here. You see, unfortunately, they're right at these guys' crotches, but at least it's even. So this guy had to be raised up a little bit and these guys had to be moved in a little bit and now it lines up perfectly. So I am gonna do uh, a future tutorial on how you hover over those and those will appear and you click the plus button, it will open up a menu. For today, we're just gonna be doing sort of the visuals of the menu, so that's okay, all right? So let's go ahead and hide our reference and talk about how we implement this menu, how we build a canvas, how we put items on the canvas, and then how we build this little fancy shine here. I do have Photoshop open. I'll show you how I created all the fancy effects, talk about color selections, the whole nine yards, okay? So, to begin with, you need a canvas item and you're going to put images onto your canvas. So think of your canvas as an invisible rectangle that just fits perfectly to the edges of your screen, all right? There are different kinds of canvases. We're not going to go into all that for, for today. But right now, all you need to do is right-click, UI, and Canvas. Now, note, the advanced users will note, that if you create any kind of a UI element and you don't already have a canvas, it will generate one for you. So I could just say raw image and it would generate a new canvas for me. Now I happen to already have a canvas, so it won't do that for me. So UI canvas, and you'll end up with an item like this. You won't really be able to see it in your game view. In your scene view, you'll be able to see it, but it'll look really weird. Look at how tiny my world is now. Look at how tiny it's getting, and this is my canvas. It's always going to look like this. It's kind of weird the way it works. It's rendering GPU stuff. Don't worry about it. Over here, you can see it's going to give you some crazy numbers. Again, don't worry really about that. We're just going to close this whole rec transform. We're only going to focus in this area. So the canvas, the render mode, we are going to be working with a screen space overlay, meaning it will perfectly fit, like I said, over top of your entire screen. Okay, cool. So screen space overlay, got it. We're done with that section. Now, in the Canvas Scaler, this is how it's going to handle a resizing of the screen. So I'm going to say scale with screen size. My reference resolution is going to be 1920 by 1080. Match width or height, and I'm going to tell it to match, focus on the width. I care more about the width, the height, I can fudge a little bit, okay? And then I never really change this, but the reference pixels, 100. We're good there. So that's all you need to do for your canvas. So now you're thinking, okay, I got it. I got my canvas. How do I get some images in here? So one thing you can do is you can create empty game objects still inside of a canvas. Even though it's not a 3D thing, it's a 2D thing. You can create empty game objects, and I highly recommend it to keep yourself organized. As you can see here, I have my reference image. It's just an image. We'll talk about that in a second. 
but then I have the sections I'm building here up in sections. So if you see I click top bar, it's kind of set into the screen, but if I look at the top bar image, you can see it's up here. Bottom bar is down here. I call this start match, this whole area here, where you pick what kind of a match you want to play, solo, duo, squads, and then click the play button. And then our player info is being built in this area. So each of these are just an empty game object. And you can see all it ends up being is a rect transform. This is the way that instead of a transform, we have a rect transform because everything deals in rectangles inside of our 2D space. So this is just how it handles that in 2D space, okay? So for example, let's create something new. So I'm gonna say canvas, create empty, and we're gonna call this tutorial. There we go. Now you'll notice that it's centered to the screen, centered to my canvas, and it has a width and height, position, and then rotation scale, etc. And then we have this fancy gizmo. This will allow you to snap things to corners. So let's create an example box down here together, okay? So I want my box to be 416 wide. I happen to know that's the width of this right there. Uh, maybe, maybe it's 464 wide. 464 wide. And we'll make it 250 tall, okay? Nice little box. But right now it's in the middle of the, the screen, what will be the screen. So I could move it by hand. I could just grab here and drag it down here. And you'll see it's updating the position accordingly. But this is the position relative to the center point, which is where I'm currently doing. So let's not do that. Let's go zero, zero. And instead, let's click this once. And I'm going to hold Alt and click in this corner. And it will instantly put me with a bottom left corner pivot. And you'll notice it updated my positions accordingly to make it snap right to there. Pretty cool, huh? Now I could always, from here, move it around a bit and say, oh, I really want it to fit kind of just like there. It will update the position accordingly, but my pivot is still from this corner. So that's pretty awesome. So that will help you kind of organize things on the screen. So what I would say is pick what makes sense to you for your pivot point based upon where the object's gonna be on the screen. If your object's gonna rest somewhere like here, maybe a bottom center is good and raise it up a bit. If it's right in the middle or close to the middle, just use a middle one. You know, pick the corner or the side that works best for you. Now you'll notice that when I open this up, it gives you this, uh, I call it a nine grid. So you have the corners and then the sides and then the side middles and then the middle. So you have all these options to choose from. Very cool. Okay, so that's how we create an empty game object that's now gonna be our container for our images. So how do we create an image? So I'm gonna right click on tutorial and say UI and you can choose image or raw image. They each have a slightly different properties, but for now, let's just focus on raw image. So again, raw image, it's gonna create just like it did before. You'll notice that it's zeroed out, it's centered to its parent, which is now our tutorial object, not our total canvas, which is why it's appearing here and not here. And then it has a size of 100 by 100. So if I go up to my tutorial and say, what was my size again? 464 by 250, right? go to my raw image and let's set this to the same, 464 by 250. And now you'll notice that it completely fills my tutorial area. Perfect, so that's telling me that this whole area is filled with an image that my object, my, my parents, my container is the same size. Now, for this raw image, let's give it a, a, a term, let's call it background. And then here you can import an image if you have an image that's that size. So let me go to our project here and let's find some of the images we've been working with. So I go to main menu, I go to my materials, textures, main menu, here's all the images we've been using. So I'm just gonna pick one, it's not really gonna fit, but I'm gonna drag and drop it in there, and it will scale it to that size. Now this image is a little bit smaller than that, let's see, what was the raw image on this? It's a little bit bigger than that actually, so it's actually crunching it down to fit that size, but that's okay. Now, once you have, either if you have a texture in here or if you don't, you can always give it a color, so I can color this now, which means if you have a white image, and we've done this before with the pickups, if you have a white, you can now color it whatever color you want, and you can also affect its alpha transparency. So I can set this alpha transparency down to 128, and that's half transparency, and you can see the little bar here will tell you, hey, half of this is not transparent, so it's kind of mixing, 50%, and it will show through to behind it. So if I bring up my reference image now, you'll see that we've created a little semi-transparent overlay onto the screen. Pretty cool, right? Okay, so we'll hide this again. Now, if you want to quickly make, say, like a top barrier to this, or a, a banner rather, and you want it to have, you know, text and all kinds of things, very easy to do. Once you have your sizes worked out, 
I'm going to hit Control D to duplicate. Let's call this banner. Okay. Now I'm going to change out my image here, and I'm just going to say none. So we go all the way to the top, say none. Okay. And I'm going to give it a color, and I eye drop something from the screen. So I drop and say something like that. Sounds good. I'm going to lower my height to say something like 32. Okay. Now I can raise my position up. Whoop. And now I've created a little header for my area here. There we go. Very quick and easy. Now we can add some text. So now you will need to import your Text Mesh Pro if you haven't already. So when I go to my banner here and I right click and I say UI, Text Mesh Pro Text, I'm going to get text right away. You might get a window that looks kind of like this, which should say, oh, I, I need to import. And there's two imports, the, the, the full import and then there's the bonus import. Just click them both, wait, and you're done, okay? So now here's our text, and again, very easily, we can just drag it around if we want to. So I can just grab here and move it over here. I can also use the numbers, I can also snap. So because this is a child of the banner, I can now snap it and say, put it in that top corner, and then I can give it a little bit of breathing room and say, let's move it out a little bit, and let's move up a little bit, something like that. And let's say this is a title banner. Now you notice it's too, too big, that's because the size of my font, or I can click this handle and drag it out, and there you go. You can also change the size here, 24, if you want it to be smaller. Boom. Now the nice thing is, all of this is contained within my tutorial thing, right? So my tutorial object is still in this bottom corner. So if I needed to move that around the screen, I can move that, and the whole thing moves with it. So this is really cool for doing things like programmatically making a window appear or disappear, or maybe you want to do some animation. So let's talk about the animation. So over here, for our play button, we have this really nice animation. Let's go back to the game view and see it work for a second. We have this kind of swoosh glint effect going across it, a little glimmer. I called it a shine for the textures. And it just goes across and goes across and it will just infinitely repeat. And it's purely visual and we're still able to click the button eventually. We're not doing any mechanics today, just visuals, but you'll be able to click the button. So, how do we do that? It's actually really easy. It's one of those things that looks crazy hard, but it's actually really easy. So, to do that effect, what we're going to do is, I'm going to open this up, open up my start match, and you'll notice that down here under play mode, we have the different play modes, talk about that in a second, the play button, we have a mask and the actual shine itself. So the way this works, and we'll redo it up here a little bit, okay? So I'm going to duplicate my play button. There we go, and I'm grab this new play button, and I'm going to move it up up here okay so now what I'm gonna do is you notice this setup here I have another object beneath it which is just pure white so I'm gonna duplicate this right beneath it this is pure white and this is gonna be my mask container okay there we go mask container and I'm just gonna say you were gonna be pure white so I'm gonna go up here and say no image you're just white but now what I want to do is I want to say anything beneath you I want to be masked I want it to kind of be cut off and you know, just like the way the mini map does. So for the mask container, I'm gonna add, and here I'm gonna look for the word mask. There we go. First one in the list, add that. Now there's this button here to say show the mask graphic, which right now we are showing it because we're seeing the white. So I'm gonna un uncheck that so we don't see it. So right now it looks like nothing's happening, right? But anything I put inside this container is gonna get masked. So let's go ahead and say UI, raw image, and I happen to know that my image is 256 by 256, which as you can see is bigger than this area, so it's already getting cut off. But now, in here in the none texture here for the texture, I'm gonna click and drag our shine texture. And this will be provided in the download, don't you worry. You can also affect the transparency if you want, if you want it to be a little less shiny. There we go. And now to make it move, this is really, really easy. Okay, I'm gonna to go to 2D or 3D scene mode here for this. To make it move back and forth is really easy. First, I'm gonna rotate it a little bit, okay? I don't actually want it to be perfectly up and down. I want it to be kind of at an angle, something like that. Now, make sure you're on global, and I don't think pivot, or if you're not on global, you'll see the arrows will look funny. Make sure you're on global so you can move it back and forth. I'm gonna move it until it's off of the area. Now I'm gonna click down here and click animation. If your animation window is not open, it's under window, animation, animation, Control six will bring up this tab. I'm gonna click create. We're gonna create an animation. You can see here's the one I already made. So tutorial anim. So I just 
I name everything underscore anim if it's an animation. So we're going to make this shine across here and go back and forth. So we're going to add some properties. I'm going to add a property of the rect transform, the anchored position. I'm going to add a property of the raw image of the color. Nice and simple. I'm going to scroll this over. I'm using the middle mouse wheel and scrolling out. It's going to be two seconds long in total. I'm going to hit the record button here so we don't have to do things manually. Yay. And I'm going to just say here is good to start and here I want you to move all the way across. Now if I had just stopped here and I hit play, this is what's going to happen. Let's see, hit play and you'll see it just repeats and repeats and repeats and repeats and repeats. Kind of fast. I mean you could do that, that's fine. Uh, I like a little bit of delay in there and to create the delay we have to change the transparency a bit. So let's do this. I'm going to go back to record mode I'm going to say okay this is fine. When you reach here, one, right before one, I want to have a change in your color. So your alpha, I'm going to set it to zero right at this point. And then over here, I'm going to set your alpha to one. Okay. And then right before you go off screen, I'm going to set it to one again. Now what this does is in the middle here, the alpha is one, meaning we see it. And then when it gets off screen, look carefully, it just goes down to zero really fast. Okay, so now it's at zero right there at the one mark. Perfect. Now, over here we can decide how long we want the delay to be. I'm going to say a delay of one second. So with this set, I'm going to move it back over here. So now with the motion, it's moving back and forth. But the alpha is still zero. We need it to be one again when it starts up again. We don't have to do anything because when it loops, it's going to come right back here and have an alpha of one again. And let's test that theory if I just hit play. Now it'll shine, and there's a little bit of a pause, and it'll shine again. And you notice the two are pretty much in the sync right now, which means what's happening is it's actually moving back invisibly, and then when it loops, it sets it to full visibility, and then goes forward again. And now you can do this technique to any button you like, and you're gonna have the same thing, and it does not change the button's button ability, whatever you call it, because this container is not really the button. This container we can just hide, and you notice there's no change to anything. So our button is actually here. So this is where we can put the, the logic for clicking on buttons. And this is just purely visual. So there you have it, guys. We've made some excellent progress today. We made some UI stuff. We made sure that everything is in here. I'm going to provide you with a whole bunch of stuff. And we're going to talk about some more of this stuff once we get into more of the coding behind it. But like the squad button here, you'll be able to click this and choose solo, duo, squad. I have custom images for you for all of that. They'll be available in the download for this video, but we're not going to use them until next time or maybe the time after. And some of these other images as I'm still building them out, but I wanted to show you what we have so far, how to do this nice little shine, and how to do your basic menu inventory here, how we're doing the different UI setups. So I wanted to show you the visuals and how we set it up. Now once we start applying coding to it, you'll see how it all connects together. So hope you guys have enjoyed very much. I got to go for now, so I'll catch you guys next time. Keep practicing. Get better, and I'll see you next time as the pilgrimage continues.